Education Mobile, quality e-learning experience on the go. Alright, so in this segment, um, this will be the first poem we treating as the non-African poetry section. Now, we'll be starting with Afro Lord Tennyson's Crossing the Bath. Now, this is a very simple poem. It has about four stanzas. Um, Afro Lord Tennyson was a poet Murray. Um, he was actually associated to write about death. Um, in this poem, he portrays death as something that is not to be afraid of. He actually says that crossing the bar, that is, is going to the other side to meet the Creator. Now, he says, sunset and evening star, and one clear call for me, not make use of that word, C A L L, call. And may, and may there be no morning of the bar when I put out to the sea. Now, I'll skip to the third stanza, which says, Twilight and evening bell, and after that dark, and may there be no sadness or farewell when I am back. Now, the idea that Tennyson portrays here is that no one should cry for him when he dies, because death is an experience that will make him transcend to the heavenlies, to meet his creator. Death is not something to be afraid of. Now, what is the setting of this poem? The poem is clearly a neighborhood that is not far from the sea. The setting, the time is the evening during the hours of dusk, when the sun is receding. The subject matter of the poem is the meditation of death. It begins with the reflection of the poet. He is saying, he describes as he described death as a clear call for him. Metaphorically speaking, the journey is actually death. He says he's going on a journey which is death, and which he portrays as crossing the path, transcending from the human experience to the celestial heavenly body. Now we look at the standard by standard analysis. Standard one. The stanza begins by drawing attention to the temporal setting of the poem, the poet's moment of awareness. He is aware of the inevitable journey. Now, death is something that we cannot avoid. Like we always hear some people say that everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. Now, this is a process that one must face. Now, he talks about the sunset and the evening star which is a reminder for the speaker that it is time for the journey. In stanza 2, he continues and re the poet's personal wish for a clement weather. He says that he's looking forward to a tide that moves as if it were asleep. Um, the second stanza presents the poet's wish for a favorable condition of the voyage. Now he is also trying to express that he wants his passing room to be a peaceful uh, 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 transition without hazards. Now he is saying the last line denotes the destination of the moving ship. The poet affirms that the voyage is a homeward one, only that this time is extraterrestrial in nature. Stanza 3, these lines begin with twilight and evening bell. Darkness is equated with the first departure since darkness will render him invisible. Now, these lines highlight the fact that death is a transition from one realm of living to another. He is saying that even when he dies, he is not dead, but he has transcended or he has been translated to another place of eternal rest. Lines 13 to 16, which is the final stanza. The first journey is such a time that it is such that time and space cannot limit it. 
However, it is still worthwhile because it will afford him to see his pilot face to face. Now, his pilot here is a metaphorical reference to God. He says, When I have crossed the bar, it relates the certainty of the point approaching of death. Now, he is not afraid of death, rather, he faces this faith with courage, hope, and certainty. Now, what are the things? Of course, the first thing we look at is death. The poet is not afraid of death. He is about to take this journey. He is willing. He has surrendered himself to death because he has a goal to meet his maker, whom he called his pilot. Now, secondly, there is a theme of hope in this poem. It is an important thing because we find that in each stanza it is expressed. The poet does not express fear, but hope. He preaches a calm acceptance of death and dying, since they are inevitable components of life. Now, these are the two major things in this poem. If you look at the structure, the poem comprises 16 lines, divided into four stanzas. Now, each stanza comments on the poet personal's wishes. Now, the rhyming scheme is A, B, A, B, C, B, C, B, E, F, E, F, G, A, G, A. Now, we look at the language and style, poetic devices. The poet makes use of metaphors. There are some metaphors which explain the time and season at which this poem occurs. There is reference to sunset and evening star. Reference to twilight, which sees the ending of the day, the ending of a phase. It talks about sadness of farewell, born of time and space. It makes reference to my pilot. My pilot is a direct comparison, a direct reference to God. The idea of flood carrying the poet far away is also metaphorical of death. This shows that when you talk about flood, it's um, a situation that one cannot control, which also explains the inevitable component of death. Symbolism. References to evening, twilight, are symbolic of the poet's old age, as well as imminent death. The death referred to in your intent is symbolic of death. The bar that the person is looking forward to crossing is symbolic of what divides life and death. There is a clear chasm between life and death. The poet makes use of personification. He says that for such a tide as moving seems asleep. Now it is the tide, T I D E, is portrayed as something that is living, that is asleep. But the poet makes use of alliteration. In line two, and one clear call for me, K and traits, too full for sound and poem, F and traits, sunset and evening star, sunset star, S and traits. The word makes use of repetition, it makes use of when, 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 always referring to time. And may there, and may there be no. In lines 3 and 11, is an anaphoric repetition which is used to underscore the poet's wish for a quiet death as well as a despite for lamentation or open grief of death. The poet does not want anyone to lament or wail over his death because it is something that he has clearly embraced. Now, the question says here, this called the theme of death in Lortenism's crossing the bar. Also, discuss the poet's attitude to death in the poem, crossing the bar. Now, this question and others will also be displayed on your screen to determine how much that you have studied in this course. Thank you.